Hello and welcome. This is Islam Ahmad. I will be your lecturer today. Okay, so now you should be seeing the risk warning in the screen, uh, both written in Arabic and English. Okay, I will leave it here for a minute. Uh, the risk warning uh, state that trading in Forex and CFDs and other derivatives is highly speculative. Um, this is uh, carries a high level of risk and it's possible to lose all your capital. These products may not be suitable for everyone. This uh, webinar is uh, recorded, so you'll have uh, the opportunity to uh, review it again in our website and our YouTube channel. So if you didn't have the chance to read uh, the risk warning, you can review it uh, later. So let's move on. Okay, today's topic will be uh, about news trading, how we can profit from trading the news. We will discuss everything about the uh, subject so you can understand how you can trade the news. Please confirm if you can still can see my screen and hear my voice at any point. If you have any issue, please send me on the chat. So um, the uh, economic data is often the most important catalyst for the short term movements. This is particularly true uh, in the currency market. And today we will be uh, focusing on the currency uh, market. Uh, the, the currency market not only respond to the U.S. economic numbers, but also uh, news from around the world. So uh, today we will speak about this economic number and when it's released, how we know it and how we predict and uh, trace uh, based on this information. So, uh, okay, we will take this step by step. So bear with me, starting with the major currencies. What? Uh, the major currencies that we can trade on. Of course, we start with the United States dollar. This is the most traded currency in the world. Okay, we have the euro, which is the currency for the European Union countries. We have the British pound uh, for England, the Japanese yen, of course, for Japan, and the Swiss franc, the Canadian dollar for Canada, the Australian dollar for Australia, and New Zealand dollar for New Zealand. These eight currencies are the main currencies you can see and uh, trade in the market. But actually, you don't trade a currency by itself. This is very basic, but very important uh, aspect. You have to bear this in your mind always. If you want to know what's the price of the dollar, there is nothing unless you compare it to other currencies. So in your, in your local country, when you ask about the uh, US dollar rate, Actually, you are asking about the rate against your local currency. That's why you are used to do it uh, like that. But in the global market, you have to define which currency are you comparing or asking about the price of the uh, US dollar against. So the most traded uh, and well-known pair is the euro against the dollar. And this currency, if you, uh, for some reason you are just uh, starting uh, in the... Um, currency trading industry, this pair, euro dollar, will always be like this. You cannot see it like dollar against the euro. It will always be the euro against the dollar. So we ask about how much we pay from the dollar to get a euro. Okay, this is the most traded pair in the world. Uh, uh, there is also the uh, uh, US dollar against the Japanese yen. You can see here the US dollar is in the left. Whatever currency is in the left, this is the currency we are buying or selling. So if you want to sell the uh, euro or buy the euro, you should now go for this currency. If you are willing to buy the dollar against the euro, so you should sell the euro dollar because you are actually buying the dollar when you are selling the euro. So uh, also we have the um, Australian dollar against the dollar, the Japanese yen. Uh, the Great Britain bound against the Japanese yen, the euro against the franc, and the franc against the yen. You will not see this uh, inverted. It's always will be like this. Okay. So uh, what's moving the uh, the uh, the news? What's the key releases we wait for? The most important are this nine, and the most important of them I will just let you know now. So we have the interest rate decision and the inflation. And the uh, inflation we know by consumer price uh, uh, index or uh, product production price 
index is CBI or BBI, and the unemployment, and of course uh, the business sentiment and consumer uh, confidence survey, the trade balance and manufacturing sector survey. So the most important of these actually is the interest rate and the inflation and the unemployment. These three are the most important of the uh, the nine because all these actually come to this three numbers and shape it. And we will discuss this uh, later one by one. So at any point, if you have any question, please send me and at the end of the webinar, I will have time uh, for all the question to answer it. How we actually trade the news? Okay, the simple and common way uh, is to wait before the news. You will find, most of the time, you will find some um, area or zone we call consolidation. I will have uh, examples uh, recorded and also live examples, okay? This is a range area where the price cannot um, break the high or the low of the support and resistance of this area. So you look for this and then a break above or below is your key. So let's have some example. Okay. Um, this is a recorded example. This is a previous example for the euro dollar. And also I will have uh, an example for today because today we had a very important news for the euro uh, and also the dollar. So at this, if you can see my screen, send me on the chat if you can't see it or if you have an issue. Okay, it looks like everything is working fine. Uh, if, if you can see this area here, this is a range. So the price cannot break above or below. We have uh, the uh, below of 1.895 and the above area of 1.0902. Of course, the or, always the fourth number is the uh, number we look. The fifth is just a, a pip uh, fraction, so it's not important. This range was about 70 bips, okay? After the news, actually, the move was around 250 bips. It was very, very strong move. But how can you trade this one? You actually should wait until the news release. Because before the news, actually, the euro was going up. So if you are, try to predict, you would buy. But if you wait until the news release, you would see the range is broken from below, and then the move will go down, OK? If it's all you need to know is the news and then you trade with what you have got, then it will be the easiest job in the world. But actually, this is not the case. And I'm happy to show you what happened after this. See, here is the move that we anticipated and got more than 250 bips. And then actually the bigger trend prevailed and the euro continue to going up. What I mean by this is I repeat always in, in every lecture and every webinar, take anything I say or any uh, technical analysis or fundamental analysis information, use it as a, a guideline. Use it as you use um, art lecture. It's not exact science. It's not 100% sure it will always do like this because actually market is moving by human beings, and human beings cannot be predicted 100%. But you can have some edge. If you have like more than 50% of the prediction, then you can trade and, and make profit in the market. So you can wait for the news, you can get the news, and you can buy and get some or sell and get some, and then the market can uh, continue in other direction. And I will give you some live examples later. But now let's move on because I want to give you some uh, information about the news itself and how to know it and how to use it. So uh, you need to know that the news actually happen because of economic releases. This is actual numbers. This is when you see like the unemployment rate, this is people doesn't have a job. This is something real in the wallet. I repeat this because sometimes we forget because we are like in trading and seeing this chart and candles. We forget this. This is real life. This is real instrument because of people having jobs or losing jobs or having inflation. 
that's why the chart is moving so this real life behind this chart you have to always remember this so if you know this you would be having more understanding of what would what come next because the central banks have some um, guidelines they have a, a certain uh, way of doing things so if you know this you would ex expect what they would do next here let's speak about this this is at every central bank board this is the economic goals at any country even in your own country there is this three main economic goals the economy want to have a maximum employment the maximum amount we can't have a hundred percent but like maybe a, a 90 something is is like perfect so and also stability this means controlling inflation so max employment number one controlling inflation number two and three the economic growth so the government should focus on growing the country GDP. This is the um, how we uh, calculate all the economy. We call it uh, the GDP, and I will explain it later. So, bear in mind these three economic goals. Whenever you see, like today, when we have this interest rate release by the uh, the ECB, the European Central Bank, why they are doing this? They actually made a rate cut. They decreased the interest rate. Why they are doing this? Because they are trying to control the inflation and they have succeeded to decrease the inflation so to keep this and to gain more power against the inflation they cut the interest rate i will tell you now why but keep in mind these three goals always keep this in mind this is the goal this is why all the central banks act and do the things they are trying to do and all the uh, economic uh, 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 government uh, try to do the same to find these three things max employment stability with no inflation and economic growth don't forget this three okay to do so you have to know that the market actually doesn't go the economy doesn't go always up or always down there is something that we call the business cycle this is at every economy, at every company, even if in your own life, you'll see the same. It's always have this uh, contraction and then expansion. We have a peak and we have a trough. It's like an uptrend, a downtrend, uptrend, downtrend. It should be the, the, the whole thing going up, but there is always have to be some contraction. There has to be some lows. This is the way it is. This is the way economy work. This is the way life work so uh, we cannot help it this is the real thing so because we know this we try to use our knowledge to take advantage of this so when the economy in the uh, state of expansion it will experience strong growth interest rates will generally be lower but will begin to increase as the expansion uh, mature so the overall production level increase, the inflation rates begin to rise as the expansion matures. So let me have a minute for this point. Wouldn't it be good if everything is going great, if all the numbers is going great? Wouldn't this be good to stay forever? Actually, no. Because um, let's take an example for you. If you are getting raise every month, Actually, what you would do is you will buy more stuff. But we have a little problem. The actual stuff that you can't buy is not increasing. The salary is increasing, but the, the things you can buy, the phone, the, the laptop, the home, the land, it's, it's not increasing. It's the same. So what happened is what we call inflation. Things become more expensive. Okay? This is the simple way to... Uh, explain the inflation we are having more money but we have the same things so you cannot buy more actually you will have to pay more to get the same things you used to get at this time we then get to the uh, other uh, twin brother of this um, we call the, uh, the correction or the contraction where the market 
has to go down. The growth has to slow. Your salary increase has to stop or even be decreased. So at this moment, when this happened, the unemployment rate rise. The inflation start to taper off. It continue until the cycle reach a trough. A trough is like the, the darkest moment at the night. Th this is actually happen in, in, in every economy and every uh, uh, stage of it. You can remember what happened after the pandemic. This was a trough. This was actually now we, we, we may be facing something like this uh, in the uh, US economy and also in the Eurozone economy. So this is the whole cycle. This is always what we expect the market to be. So if we are going in a peak, the prices are going up. So the interest rate has to go down and then the market will go down as the interest rate and the inflation go down. Then when we uh, hit the trough, the market has to go up. So the interest rate started again and again and so on. This cycle repeat itself over and over again. It might even uh, happen over years. Okay, so now let's talk about the most important aspect that the central bank can use to control this uh, cycle, the interest rate. You always uh, hear this at every country that the, the uh, interest rate now is like uh, 5% uh, or 4%. It depends on your country, of course, and the currency, uh, but it's, it's always known. You know how much is the interest rate. So where you and all other uh, uh, people and actually banks, where do you get this, uh, the interest rate? You get it from the central bank for your country. So for example, the Federal Reserve on the uh, United States, the ECB, the European Central Bank, set the interest rate just like today to influence the currency value. So a higher interest rate actually attract foreign investment and increase demand for the currency. So whenever the interest rate is going up, this means the currency will probably go up. That's why today when we have the cut in the, uh, the euro interest rate, we expected that the euro will uh, decrease in value. This is not always the case, but this is most of the time what happened. So the, the, the Fed set target, the Fed in the United States set target for the interest rate at which bank lend to each other. So he started by giving this rate to the banks and then the banks use this with each other. And of course, bank lend money to the uh, normal person. So it will give the person the loan with some extra uh, profit. And of course, it will take the money from uh, saving uh, persons. So and will give the interest rate with higher rates as the Fed uh, increased the rate. The same will be in the Federal uh, Reserve happen. The same will be with the ECB, Bank of Japan. All the central banks will have the same scenario just to maintain the inflation. So this is the uh, the numbers. This number of the uh, ECB changed just before our lecture to uh, 3.4. Okay. This is the interest rate of Bank of Japan. The uh, Federal Reserve is 5%, 1% in the Swiss National Bank. Of course, the Bank of England also 5%. And all the central bank now actually is going to decrease the interest rate because of the uh, inflation. Now let's talk about inflation. So inflation, as I just uh, explained, affects your power to buy things. The inflation means there is more money demanded from you to buy the same thing. This is the simple way to um, uh, define the inflation. But what is inflation actually? This is just a gradual loss of purchasing power. So the power of your money is becoming less and less because there is more money and there is less good. So how we calculate the, uh, the, uh, the inflation? We calculate it as the average price of basket of selected goods. This every bank and every country maybe has uh, some different, but it's always in, in the selected goods that mostly used in the country. So when we see that this basket price is actually increasing, we use this uh, in a monthly and yearly calculation. So a high inflation means that the prices are increasing quickly, while low inflation means that the price are increasing but slowly. There will always be inflation, but 
the inflation will have certain percentage. For example, the target of the Fed in the United States uh, to get 2% per year in the inflation. So in inflation measures how quickly the prices of goods are uh, rising and sometimes uh, classified into three types. How the, the inflation, how it happened? It happened because of three reasons. Demand pull inflation because of the demand increase or the cost push inflation because of the cost of producing the uh, uh, things we buy is actually going up and built-in inflation and this is regarding the uh, people working will always ask every year for a raise and this will cause inflation. So uh, this is how we uh, know that the inflation will happen. You can see here, this is the, the three um, eternal reasons of inflation. There will always be inflation because there is always be these things. There is uh, something new and everybody wants to buy it. It has a price, but because there is a lot of demand, this thing will be um, in high price. Like yeah, you see the, like the new iPhone when it came, like the first day, actually it has an overprice than the uh, official price because there is a lot of people demanding and there is some limited amount of the iPhone that's available. So there is also the cost push uh, inflation, which is the, the, the things you buy to produce the, the, the product, the end product, is actually increasing price. So you have to increase the price of the end product because the cost is actually going higher. And the built-in inflation, as I told you, everybody's asking for a raise every year. So that's um, built-in inflation. It will increase. So, so the, uh, the uh, factory you work in or the company will charge the customers more to get the uh, equivalent of the raise you got. That's the reasons of the inflation. Now we understand interest rate. Now we understand inflation. Now let's talk about the GDP. If you have any question or at any moment you have an issue, please send me on the chat. I will be more than happy to answer all your questions. So the, the gross domestic product or the GDP, simply this is the country's economic performance. So a growing GDP, an increase in the number, this means the economy is in a good state. And how we measure this, this is value of all the finished goods and services that made in the country. Simplify, just I don't want to complicate things. Imagine that everything the country produce, we combine all this and then the number is the GDP. So as long as the number is increasing, this is a good for the economy and for the country. And if the number is decreased, this is um, not a very good sign for the uh, currency and, of course, for the economy itself. So uh, let's keep it simple. Now we will talk about the employment data. You and me, everybody is trying to get a job every day. There is try, people trying to get a job. So in uh, a country like the United States, which actually has the uh, currency that affect 88% of the currency uh, market bears, there is a, a, a local uh, report that we call the NFP. This is a local report. This measures the non-farm payroll, the, the amount of people other than the uh, farm uh, working class that asking for uh, unemployment uh, uh, from the United States government. They ask for this because they can't find a job. They are ready, they are qualified, but the economy did not prov provide a, a suitable job. This number, which is local number, actually affect the whole economy of the United States and the, actually the whole world economy. Because based on this number, we can predict what the Fed will do with the interest rate. Because if the employment rate is going, uh, 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 unemployment rate is going higher, means a lot of people is, cannot find a job. This will affect the interest rate uh, decision by the Fed. So keep it simple like this. This is a local uh, uh, report, but it comes every uh, Friday. The first Friday in the uh, month is the most important. So uh, whenever you have a, a, new, a first Friday in a month, you will have the NFP or uh, the non-farm payroll announcement, and this will affect the market uh, in a, a very important way. If the market got 
uh, positive news. This will increase the dollar value, so it will decrease the gold and all the other currencies against it, and vice versa. If the uh, numbers are negative, the dollar will uh, fall and the gold will go higher, and the euro and the dollar, uh, uh, Canadian dollar and other uh, currencies we spoke about, of course, it will go higher in value. So, so uh, this always comes at the first Friday of the month at 4.30 p.m. Dubai time. And as I told you, this is a very important news. Okay, I will give you now some example of actual news. At any moment, if you can see my screen or you can't hear my voice, just let me know. Looks like everything is going fine. So this was the bound uh, against the dollar. This was actually yesterday. We have the uh, consumer price index. This actually, that's what we uh, call CBI and this measure inflation. So we had a number that was very negative. See how the bound dollar reflected in a very strong move. See before that, this is a one minute candle. See how the move was like very choppy, very slow. And then suddenly when the news came, it was very strong move. So this is just to give you an example of how the market react and move when there is a news and compare this to uh, the normal move. So all this now you understand, you know about inflation, interest rate, unemployment, you know all this. But how you actually know the news? How you know there is a news today or there is uh, something uh, expected in this week? We have something that we call the economic calendar. We have this in our website, in Godo website, you can see it. Uh, and also you can find it in uh, other website, it's not exclusive. This is global, This everybody see the same data, and this is very important that you have the economic calendar. Always you see it before the, uh, you start trading, you look at the economic calendar and see what's happening to know what to expect today. Okay, now I'll answer your question. I will have some uh, live examples for the uh, subject matter. Okay, now, this is the, um, this is the euro dollar. Let me open the one hour candle. See, this is the news. Today we have, like um, two hours ago, we had the announcement of the interest rate of the Fed, of the, sorry, the ECB, the European Central Bank. So the, the ECB was expected to cut the rate by uh, 25 uh, points. So it will be decreased from 4.65 to 4.4. And actually, this is what happened. So the market started by going up a little bit, if you can see here. I'll give you, this is the five minute chart. And this is the one minute chart. See here, I want to show you how the market reacted to the news. Actually, at the first minute, the market was going up. Can you see the screen? Okay, let me just, uh, I think. Okay, I think now you can see the MT4. Yeah, working fine, great, great. So this is the uh, minute we had the news announcement, the decrease of the interest rate. Actually what happened in the first minute is the market was going up a little bit and then it went down with the, this very strong move, okay? Uh, this was not only affected by the, um, the uh, European news, there was also news from the uh, US. So whenever you have something like this, you have double effect. So if you can see the one hour chart, you would see how the move was going down. Can we expect this before the news? Yes, we can, but can we uh, know for sure, for 100% what will happen? No, this is what I repeat. Use all this knowledge as, a, as an art, as a guideline. Don't use it as a, a, an exact science because you would like sell from here, okay, before the news. Where would you put your stop loss? Like here, for example, it would be hit by the first move. Uh, above a little, it would be hit by the news. 
maybe here the the, the previous support even this could be hit with a little uh, increase of the spread so don't uh, judge what happened after the news with what you have already known before the news before the news you didn't know for sure what will happen okay you can wait for the news this is what i recommend for the news rate uh, trading you have one of two things you have to determine risk before the news and accept it so you say i will sell this is my stop loss i will accept whatever happened the stop loss will be hit it's okay for me just like any other trade this is a one way of doing this or the other way you can wait until the news and actually most of the time the news after it, it happened and it announced the market give you some consolidation some correction just like what happened here actually at the very first minute of the news announcement of the interest rate cut the market was going up so it was giving you a better opportunity to sell so if you sold before the news actually the price after the news was better it gave you a very good chance to sell after the news and then the uh, announcement from the united states supported the uh, the us dollar so the euro now is weakening because of the interest rate cut and uh, the strength of the us dollar so this is how you can trade the news and this way you can wait for the range as i told you this is a range you can see here this is a range okay so you can wait for the range to be broken someone would be like waiting for the scandal so you have like an, an open order for uh, for this one bending order whenever it's uh, like going below this price 10.81 um, you can go and sell the market so after the news actually the 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 price would be hit and your trade would be very good uh, actually there was like no correction after it so it would be a very good trade as well you can use also uh, uh, other uh, news you know like for example that the um, there is will be a cut in or there is in some news in the bound so you can use what you have what you know for something else you can use for the gold let's speak about the gold for some time so because you know the market uh, is responding to the uh, US dollar news so if the news was like negative you can buy the gold or positive you can sell the gold but this is not actually the case at these days because we are facing some uh, geopolitical events that happening in the middle east and this is making the gold going up even if the dollar is going uh, with a, a strength so you don't use the gold is a um, gold against dollar so it's like 100 percent in opposite direction no sometimes actually both go up like what we face uh, today because of the situation in the Middle East and because of the inflation rising. So the gold price actually is going up. And I think it wouldn't go again uh, below the 2,600 for a very long time. So this was about the uh, euro dollar and also about the gold. If there is no more question, I would end this session. Okay, um, looks like everything is going fine. So um, thank you for uh, your time and you will have a recorded uh, version of this uh, session in our website and also our YouTube channel. We always do these webinars on Thursday. Please feel free to uh, register for the upcoming webinar in the upcoming uh, Thursday. If there is no more question, I would now end the session. Okay, thank you for your time and see you in the next webinar.